This video is brought to you by Squarespace, an incredible platform for creating stunning web presence for your business, but more on that later. I think there is one simple question that you really want to know the answer to. What is a better deal? The M2 MacBook Air or a brand new M2 MacBook Pro? I've reviewed both of them and I've used both of them and believe me, what a controversial this generation of Macs is. Choosing the right machine is by no means easy. First, let me clarify one important point. These are two laptops from different categories and they are priced accordingly. The MacBook Air is marketed as an entry-level laptop for students and MacBook Pro is marketed as a professional tool. However, they both are operating slightly outside their leagues. MacBook Air turned out to be quite capable even in some professional tasks, while the new MacBook Pro became worse in pro tasks. So comparing these laptops is very much relevant and important. They simply overlap too much. Another thing that makes this comparison interesting is the price. The new MacBook MacBook Air is sold for $1199 and the refurbished one for $1080. The MacBook Pro starts at $2000 and you may be surprised to see the difference this extra $1000 makes. Okay, now we can actually start comparing the two. Design-wise, they are very similar. Both are very boxy, very square-ish, very industrial. The MacBook Air is noticeably thinner and lighter than the MacBook Pro, but the difference isn't astronomical. Both laptops are very comparable in size and dimensions. I do really like this design. It radiates confidence and utility, which is great. Big palm rest, huge trackpad, almost identical on these two. Yet, I must say, for me, typing on air is slightly more comfortable. Thanks to the thinner body, the hands are not as elevated from the table. This means the sharp edges of the body cut hands much less and the blood circulation is also slightly better. If you need a machine for typing, then you need to get a wedge-shaped MacBook Air with an M1 chip, but enough about that. What about the displays? Display is probably the biggest noticeable difference between the two. Despite being roughly the same size, these are two completely different panels. MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch liquid retina screen with 60 Hz refresh rate and 500 nits of peak brightness. MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has a phenomenal display. It's mini LED screen that goes up to 1000 nits in brightness and supports ProMotion. It is fair to say that the screen on MacBook Pro is two times better than on Air. The biggest difference for me, without a doubt, is the Pro Motion. It just makes everything so much better. Animations become much smoother and look faster. If you have never used Pro Motion, it's something else entirely. Plus, the mini LED in the Pro MacBook is much better both for working with colors or casual movie watching. If you want to Netflix and chill with ultimate comfort, the MacBook Pro is your guy. The colors are more vibrant and true to life, the blacks are darker and more real. On air, all blacks are more gray and watching movies on full brightness can be a little bit uncomfortable in dark environments. Another thing you instantly notice is the sound. On MacBook Pro, you instantly see the speaker grills aimed at you. On air, they're hidden in the hole between the display and the body where vents used to be. I can't say that I prefer either of these approaches. Both seem legit and nice in their own way. I like the sneaky approach to the design of the air and I like the straightforward, brutal approach of the Pro. If only there was a metal ground. As for the sound, it's respectable on both. The speakers on Air are noticeably quieter than on Pro, but the overall quality of sound is somewhat similar. If you remember last year's video where we compared the speakers on M2 Air to a MacBook Pro with M1 Pro, the M1 Pro wiped the floor with Air. The M1 Pro machine just had better sound, much deeper, more detailed, with more highs and lows. But in 2023 models, Apple did an oopsie, and the speakers became worse. Now they are more mushy, less detailed, and sound flatter. So if you want a laptop with good speakers, choose neither one of these two, opt for the 2021 models instead. Displays and speakers are very interesting to talk about, but you know what's even better? The webcam. I know it's not the most interesting thing in the world, but still, if we directly compare webcams, we'll see that on Pro, the image looks slightly better. The amount of details is a tiny bit better, there's less noise, and the sound is slightly better. It's not a 
night and day difference and if a webcam for you is a nice thing to have, then you will be equally fine with both machines. Before we go any further, let me tell you about Squarespace. Establishing a strong online presence is vital for the success of your business. Squarespace offers a solution to this, being a user-friendly website building platform that provides various features to boost your online presence. The platform simplifies the process of creating a website as you just have to choose a category, select a template, and then customize it to your liking. No need to have prior coding knowledge as everything is easy to use and even grandma can do it. Squarespace offers e-commerce options to set up an online store and start selling products or services with ease. The platform also provides analytics tools that help you monitor your website's performance and make data-driven decisions for your content and marketing strategies. So start building your ideal website now by signing up for a free trial on squarespace.com slash autumnwiner and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by using code autumnwiner. And now back to the video. The most important part of this comparison is the performance. How much faster is the M2 Pro? Well, by a lot. Our M2 Air is bone stock. 8 CPU cores, 8 GPU cores, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD. MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has 10 CPU cores, 16 GPU cores, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 SSD. Even on paper, the difference is significant. There is no point in looking at synthetic benchmarks to know that MacBook Pro just runs in circles around the air when it comes to any performance-related tasks. But in real-life use cases, the difference may not be that big. When web browsing, both laptops perform really similar. Web pages load really fast on both, the scrolling works great, no lags or reloads. However, when you saturate your 8 gigs of memory on air with open tabs, you start seeing reloads and small stutters. The amount of such things depends on the websites you open, but still. On MacBook Pro, you won't have such an issue. There is more memory and the SSD is much faster, which means swap works noticeably better. But in small browsing sessions, you most likely won't see any difference between these two. But the differences appear as soon as you start doing something power intensive. Video editing, much faster on the Pro. More cores, more memory, faster SSD, and better hardware decoders do their magic and MacBook Pro finishes rendering noticeably faster than the Air. But that doesn't mean you can't edit videos on Air, you can. But the export times can be somewhat disappointing when compared to Pro. It's much better than an any Intel-based MacBook Air, but still. If you are considering buying a laptop for coding, don't buy the Air. The lack of a proper cooling system leads to heavy throttling, so if you want to work with heavy projects, compile them many times in a row, the Air isn't the best machine for it. Of course, in small projects, the difference will be minimal, but still. The Pro is better for any performance-hungry task. This, of course, includes photo editing. If you're a photographer and need to export a bunch of heavy photos, Air isn't the one to buy. However, if you want to make a few quick edits, during shooting, Air will do just fine. I can't say that Air is perfect for photo editing, but it does the job when you're not pushing it to its limits. If you can keep your load within the reasonable limits, Air can be a viable purchase. Overall, I would say that performance-wise, the MacBook Pro is a clear winner, and if you want a real powerhouse, you must buy Pro. As for the battery, both laptops are performing exceptionally well far exceeding the needs of an average person. Air would even be better in some cases, thanks to the low-powered M2 chip. When under load, it drains much less juice. Pro, on the other hand, thanks to those coolers, can go full throttle all the time, which consequently leads to quicker battery drain. So if you are exporting heavy files for hours off the battery, the Air will last longer. But don't let that confuse you. On Pro, you will do the same things faster and have enough battery for casual YouTube watching, or text typing. I would say that in terms of battery life, it's a draw. Another small thing that matters is the port selection. The MacBook Air has two Thunderbolt ports, a MagSafe for charging, and a headphone jack. MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has an additional Thunderbolt port, an SD card slot, and HDMI 2.1. MacBook Pro is obviously more versatile. With it, you mostly can live without dongles, while with Air, you constantly need one. I would say that the M2 Pro MacBook Pro is the best Mac to buy, but by saying that, I'm cutting 
checking out another MacBook, the Mac that I'm considering to be better than the M2 Pro MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro model. Yes, you heard me right. The 2021 model, in my opinion, is better. It has the same display, almost identical performance, faster SSD, better speakers, and it costs less. Apple sells it for a little over $1,500, and that's an absolute bargain. You can beat the performance to dollar ratio of that thing. By purchasing the M1 Pro instead of these two, you will get possibly the best MacBook of the decade for only a couple hundred dollars more than the base MacBook Air. I think this is a far better deal.